Hey guys, I'm here to show you a little bit of this process of um, creating a female character in 3D code. Actually, just the the, the head. And the um, yeah, I, I I I received these questions by some of you guys asking me about um, creating realistic characters in 3D code because usually I make like this clay studies these rough clay studies so yeah I, I took that as a challenge and also for me to learn new stuff in 3D code because I'm also using these videos um, to learn more 3D code and share and so we can actually share with each other if you guys have questions you can ask in the comments below if you if you have something to share in a previous video someone um, taught me a new, a new thing that I didn't know about it was the auto relax something like that while you're sculpting uh, when the brush is active I'll, I'll, I'll see what's the, name, what's the name but it's something about when you're you're sculpting it um, auto normalizes the surface and leaves it unstretched unstretched so yeah I uh, as a beginning I will start with the rough model as you can see and it's normal in any software and from from here on out I will be increasing the resolution little by little actually not increasing like in ZBrush or, or Blender like you're, you have a multi resolution and you increase you have a new tool for that here in, in 3D code but I will stick to voxel sculpting at the beginning where it's more free um, you can add and remove stuff on the fly um, you, you, for this model, you, you could already start in the surface mode, but I always prefer to use um, voxel mode in the beginning. I don't know why, I, I don't know it's because of the feeling of it, uh, that you're not actually just moving a surface around, you're adding and removing clay or these voxels, right? I don't know, you, you, you can try it for yourself and you see the difference. Here I, I was using a surface pinch, it was because you can also use some surface tools while in, in voxel mode, but um, you actually have the voxel pinch and I, I, I will see that later and I will use it more. And for, for those of you who, who don't, who are not very um, familiar with 3D code, um, whenever you want to know if I'm using voxels or, or surfa surface you can just look at the bottom right um, layers panel right now it's not active because I, 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 I toggle uh, the full screen but you, you see the layers and if you see a, a V beside the, the layer names it's using voxel if you see an S it's surface so I will not be talking the whole uh, video because I think most of the time you can just enjoy, learn and chill and I'll, I'll put some music. But any questions you have later you can put and I'll try to answer them in the comments below. Uh, but um, yeah and uh, as you could see at the beginning of the video I I'm, I'm showing this as a work in progress because I, I, I still haven't finished it and this is the the base model I will come to, to, to actually I'll come to a higher level in, at the end of the video but um, I, I already worked on surf, surface skin like pore the pores of the skin I, I also started adding them not very detailed like uh, uh, the Anthropus does. <laughs> that's that's just 
a way beyond me. And but I, I actually try to at the pores and to see how skin behaves. But these um, this part of the video will be on the on the later on the next video, part two. This is part one. So so yeah. So I can already say that 3D code is very capable of creating realistic characters. And you guys will see that I'm not the best uh, one to do that. I mean, I, I still have so much to learn, but but I wanted to give this a try, and yeah, it's an amazing software. And you'll see that I I use. I, I really like using the same rake um, clay brush for creating the, the the shapes of the model, but different to to Beethoven and the other characters I, I put here in my YouTube videos in the YouTube channel. Um, I often smooth it out later after after creating the shape I want. And yeah, you can see here in the layer panel that you have the, the V showing it's a, a voxel object. So yeah, you guys were, were talking about ZBrush and some comments and, and saying how you, you don't like it because Maxim bought it. And I don't know how it's going to affect ZBrush, if it's going to be more expensive. I don't know if it's on, only going to be subscription based. I, I don't really know, but one thing I know is that we as artists and and users we must give a try to other softwares um, because it's very bad to have monopoly in any any area we think about so of course you, you you're not going to be using weak tools just because you want to use them but if we have capable tools other than uh, the, the industry standard that is the brush. We should give them a try, you know. And we already have those. We have here three coat, and as I said, plenty in the other video, the stylized character uh, video. Uh, we, we also have Blender, which is free. So yeah, this way. What we are doing is we are showing that we have these cheaper or even free other softwares that uh, can kind of do the same. So we're going to show um, other freelance artists that hey, you you don't really need to to be using the industry standard to work, you know. And I know that sometime if you're getting hired by a company and it needs to, it says um, they need to use ZBrush, that you're going to need to learn it. But uh, everything you learn in 3D code, not everything, but the sculpting area of using any software you use, anything you learn in this regard will be useful for the other. You not you don't you will not be relearning from the beginning. You know everything. It's not that here. I'm just playing around with with uh, the voxels.
So here uh, with the eyes, I, I had a little bit of problem with the masking. I, I think the masking in voxel mode is it's not very good. And it's like when you're using masking, it, it auto switch. It's not it auto switch, but it's a a surface tool, the, the the masking tool. So when you switch to a voxel tool, it kind of glitches and bugs and the masks um, disappear so yeah I think that's something that could improve I don't know if I'm maybe I'm doing something wrong so oh, as, as I see the idea is that you use the mask and you keep using the, the surface um, tools even if you're in the voxel in a, in a voxel object so yeah, definitely uh, 3D code has some small um, small problems, small things that they need to be observed and they need to be taken care of. And, and that's why we are using things to make them improve if we, if we only keep using one software. Well, only that software will be good and it will be hard to have something else to emerge and I don't know. Uh, but it's not only that, of course. I, I mean, what I like here is, as I said before, is the voxel engine and how free it is. And it's such an, a capable software. And the other thing. I also adore Blender, and I, sometimes, from time to time, I'll be, I'll be um, creating videos um, using Blender. But the thing is, just there's just so few things related to 3D code, at least in YouTube, uh, that I, I thought it would be better to just keep learning and sharing with you guys and so we can share the, the knowledge and stuff. So one, one uh, uh, very good thing that I like in 3D code is how you can easily switch the, the alpha brush for your, for any brush actually. Uh, you see that I have clay and I Usually, I, I, I keep using these like these stripes, this rake alpha, but I can just easily just press in the circle or square one. And I know in ZBrush it's also easy, but I don't know, it's just the interface here, and I, I didn't need to change the interface that much, it already comes like this with the alphas as brushes there in the top right corner. Uh, it really changes the way the clay behaves, but yeah, there's too so many things in in this software that I still need to dig. Uh, oh, and I, as you can see, uh, I already switched to surface mode. You guys can keep an eye out um, to to see if I'm using auto subdivide, which is in the top left. Uh, panel, these two options panel. When I'm using auto subdivide, it means it's kind of like uh, Sculptus Pro and and Dyna, Dintopo in Blender. Uh, so it auto subdivides in the fly, and it's very, very good. I mean, it's better than Blender and, and ZBrush, definitely you will see the, the high amount of polygons that I will reach still using the auto subdivide and it just works. It doesn't matter, I mean. But of course, there, there is a moment that it will lag. Of course, you, you can't use it forever. But as you will see in the future when I, I still want to to add more details, to to add the, the skin textures, the skin pores, and stuff, I would just switch to to the wireframe mode, so I can see how dense the mesh is. 
I think you just press Z. I don't know if I, I maybe I set up a hotkey for that. I just press Z, or maybe it already is this this shortcut, and it will show how the mesh is um, in wireframe. So I will switch to that to see how dense the the, the mesh is. You'll see later, and I will decrease the the depth strength of the of my my brush to zero so I don't add clay but I still have the subdivision um, aspect of it so I will just subdivide where I want to add more detail and then I will work with a brush without the auto subdivide mode on so I can add these details there without having lag issues with lag issues I, 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 may, I, Sometimes I can speak s stuff in English because my English is definitely not good. Um, I want to say something, but I'm I'm saying something totally different. When I mean lag issues, I mean like you're having glitches or or slow down. And today I'm a little bit slow, but uh, I will share. Uh, this video I would try to keep weekly but you never know and uh, at the end of the video uh, uh, I will not I will I will still have more things uh, already recorded of this model even at, at the end of the, the video so I, I will not start the, the, the pore sculpting in this particular video but in the next one I will and then the next thing I'm going to work on is I will try to make a retopology of it. I'm still not sure if I will, I will probably do a ma manual retopology because I'm not very good at it and I want to learn. And Chirico Talk actually has a very good retopology room with very amazing tools. I don't know what I pressed that the model, this object started spinning around, rotating, and I lost the symmetry. So I, I just skip ahead, I, I fix it, I, it was terrible. I don't know what did I press that made the the, mod, the, the object start spinning and I lost the, the symmetry axis, it was terrible. And it will be a little bit of a problem later on, but I will... I will easily fix it, don't worry. So yeah, I'll just keep adding these, what is this, secondary, tertiary level of detail. I never know. I know that I, I'm just using many reference. I really recommend that. I mean, any artist today always recommend that. But what I do, my setup, I have in a Huion Canvas Plus. So I use it as my main monitor and I have a another monitor uh, on front of it. On front or on top, I, yeah, on front and top. And on this other monitor, which is 27 uh, inches, I, I will put my PureRef with many reference. And for this specific, uh, uh, project. I really wanted to 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 stop and and research the the reference because usually I'm very lazy and I want to skip ahead uh, the the stages of, of, of a project and uh, and I surely do not recommend you skipping the reference stage take a time like 30 minutes one hour whatever it is and to look for good reference and make a board in pure ref with those reference so i got lots of female um heads and in pinterest i actually have lots of good things and of many ethnicity ethnicities and and then for the, the later stages, of, uh, I, I got some very skin 
texture details, I try to look for them. So yeah, I definitely um, recommend that you do that. So I, I just kept these other monitors with the reference and the main monitor here I am sculpting all the time. So that's why I always keep coming back to the silhouette and, and to see if the, the head is too, the skull is too big uh, in reference to the, the, the facial uh, elements. And that's why from time to time I, I would be using the, the grab brush, even though I am already in in a secondary tertiary level of detail. And yeah, I'm just it's good to, to, to be changing the um, mat caps you work. I think my cats just uh, dropped something. <laughs> And uh, it's good to, to be changing the, the, the match caps because it kind of gives you a refresh view of your model. It's kind of like when you're drawing and you want to just mirror the, the drawing and to see it from another view. Here I, I'm adding a little bit of poly paint to see how it looks, but then I say, no, I don't need these right now. Just, it was just a to see how it was, but I want to, to focus on the details of the surface and the sculpting itself. So the, you see that I, I will keep going back to the eyelids because it's something that I have lots of problem. Um, I, I tend to make them too thick. I mean, it's, it's not good to have them too thin, but I, I, especially in the last model I made of Beethoven, I, I, when I render it, I thought, man, this, these eyelids are just too thick. It's not supposed to be looking like that, you know? So that's why, what the references are there for. You know, for for Beethoven, I just used one image. And it was a painting of him. So you see me coming back to the eyes from time to time. But yeah, and one other good thing about uh, 3D codes is that, you, as you can see in the top. Um, bar you have shift and control shift with each with smooth and super relax why is that smooth doesn't work very well in 3d code i mean for voxel sculpting for low poly oh, not low poly but for um, a rough sketch for it, it works very well but i I see that in, at least in surface mode, when you have an uneven um, topology, it kind of creates some artifacts. I don't know if I, I uh, maybe I talked about this in the last one. Um, oh yeah, and the other uh, tool I said it's this top bar tool. It's removes stretching. I I still don't know what what's the use of it, but it kind of removes a little bit the stretching of the polygons and the, the topology, but it, it didn't affect this uh, super relaxed problem that I, I said in, in the stylized character video. But anyway, what I was saying is that, you know, this, this move, it's not very good, it creates these little artifacts when you smooth something and the topology is not even. But the super relax doesn't. So the super relax is very, very good for really smoothing out the, the surface. And it's quite strong, it could be quite strong and quite, um, 
by tweak depending on the pressure you put and as you saw just now as I, I used the super relax on the behind the ears a little bit of the geometry jumped um, from the, the head to the, the ear and that's the problem with the super relax is that if you have geometry that's kind of overlapping uh, they will kind of interact with each other and geometry will jump from from one place to the other and it's not good but just in those um, specific cases I hope they solve this I hope maybe I'm, I'm doing something wrong I have to, to activate some some setting but for now I still don't know why this happens this also happens with the eat details here in surface mode I always use eat details with the clay brush but uh, whenever this happens in an area that uh, geometry is kind of too close together on top of each other so I will disable the eat details as you can see in the two options right on the left that's why I keep the two options always close by and it's very very easy to just disable it but eat details is very very good I mean it kind of uh, it does what it says, it eats the details of the surface beneath, but uh, without being too strong. I mean, you can set it up to be very strong, but it already comes in a default uh, value that is very good. It's kind of like in Blender, I also use the auto smooth with the clay brush. Most of the time I use it. Um, and I don't know, it's because when you use without it it's kind of adding too much noise to your it's not because I, I'm, I'm making a real kind of realistic character that has this smooth uh, skin that's a female that I'm, I'm using it's not that I use this even with rough characters it's because it doesn't mean that I want to erase everything that's beneath uh, the cursor but I I also don't want to I, I, I want when I when I add the clay that I, I can see that stripe of clay on top of that without having the noise from the information beneath it. I mean you can try it for yourself, you see you I think you understand maybe that that's only my thing and hey and, and each person has their own new ways of, of working of using tools um, so here as I said I'll come back to the eyes a lot oh yeah and the, the pinch brush with the auto subdivide is amazing is just amazing in 3D code. You can see here I'm adding the details on the lips. It's just it's 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 not um, bugging. It's not lagging. No, it's working on normal speed. No lag at all. And of course I I had I had upgrade I have upgraded my computer. Um, Few, few months back now I'm using a quite good computer with an RTX 3060 and, but even in my previous notebook which had a simple graphics card it already worked quite well I'm saying that because uh, 3D code actually uses the power of the of the graphics card you have So yeah, and the reference really help a lot. And you can see in the option, two options in the subdivision tag for the auto subdivision, you can set the details level. I think the default is zero. I don't understand the zero one. It works quite well for adding detail, but not much detail. 
Mm, you can try it for yourself, I, I, but it still works. Even if you set it at zero, it doesn't. It's, it doesn't mean it's not working. The auto subdivision it works, but it kind of just uses the 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 size of the the brush and the, I think the resolution of the brush you're using as reference. The developers would really talk much better about that. And talking about the developers, it's also very good to talk to say that these guys are from Ukraine. I mean, from uh, I, I kind of forgot that that was true, and you can see even in their in that in their website that they have the Ukraine flag, and that's also another uh, reason why we should use these other softwares, especially this one, because I mean, if you're paying for this software, which is, it it has its price, it's very, I think, I think it's a very fair price. And they have the, um, end of the year sales, I think every year they have. So it's very, very good to, to, to know that you're buying something and you're helping these guys that they are in a very difficult situation right now, you know, with Russia attacking them all the time. And I can't even imagine how it is. So that's something to consider, you know, also when you're using anything, not only, I'm not only talking about softwares, but uh, for example, if you got, like, like games, and I really like games and I'm really looking forward to to uh, playing Stalker 2 <laughs> and the guys are also from Ukraine and they're developing this game that's looking amazing that is quite a huge open world um, game and it's looking very good I, I, I didn't play the, the first one but I like uh, uh, FPS so I will probably and I, I have Game Pass, so I'll probably be playing them and then it will come day one for... I think it will, I saw a news about that for Game Pass. And yeah, and I also really like to talk about these different things here, although this is a sculpting session. I don't want to keep only the time lapse with the music, so from time to time I, I won't have... Um, things to say about what I'm sculpting, as you you can probably see. So I'll talk about something else, but let me know if you like that, if you want to comment, if you want to talk about what you have in mind, if you like games. Actually, I'm going to, to put out a question here, because um, I already have a very good computer for gaming, and I use it, but I also like the uh, console to keep in the living room. I have now a PS4, but I'm thinking about moving upwards to to these next gen um, consoles that we have. But I'm in a big doubt if I I, I buy a PS5 or an, an Xbox Series X. Why is that? You see, you can say, man, the the exclusive um, games in, in PlayStation are way better, you can say that. And yes, I, I do understand that at least in two, uh, 2022, uh, Xbox didn't have almost no, no exclusives, exclusives, didn't have much new things to, to, to use. Um, but also, I mean, the only game that really makes me want to still stick to PlayStation is The Last of Us. I mean, it's amazing. And I already heard someone saying that may maybe or probably they will make a part three, The Last of Us part three, and I, I don't know about that, but anyways, it's not because of God of War. I mean, it's a very good game, but it's not, I, I wouldn't buy a 
console just because of God of War, Ragnarok, or for uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Um, but the the actual thing that is making me move my head, my thinking of buying an Xbox Series X is because of the Game Pass. I mean, the Game Pass is amazing. Let, let, let me just hold a little bit about Xbox. Let me talk about this multi-resolution um, <laughs> very fast, very quickly. This is a new feature that they added, and I think it's amazing. It's working very good. It, it, I mean, Chili Code is just crazy. It, it doesn't work like multi-res in Blender or I don't know how you say in ZBrush, multi-res in ZBrush that you just subdivide. If you have already a, a very high poly model that you reach these number of polys by auto subdivision, as I did here, did here in in this model, um, you can just open the multi resolution and then res uh, set the the lower uh, res uh, resolution levels. So you you will actually unsubdivide. And that's amazing that you have the higher highest uh, level of subdivision is the one that you had before, and then you you will decrease them by decimation. I, I, I think yes, they, they use decimation because it's a very triangulated triangulated mesh, and um, and it's just amazing. It works very well. So I I just tried it. It's not uh, 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 it's still not uh, very into my uh, how can I say the, the way I scoped I'm, I'm not using it very very often but and also because it's a very new uh, tool but it's amazing it works very well so you can just sense of divide and you can use the the low poly version to grab stuff around and then you can just go back to the higher level and you can remove the multi-resolution because when you are in multi-resolution you cannot use auto subdivision um, tools for obvious reasons like the kind of they, they store the resolution so you can't sub, uh, add subdivision on the fly with auto subdivide so they will be off so here I already switched off the, the multi-resolution I used it for what I wanted I wanted to move around some, some some big areas like and um, just to see how it worked it's amazing that these guys are still working i don't know how it is if they are in ukraine and still in ukraine they are working on 3d code but they are putting out uh, updates constantly as you can see um, yeah, it's amazing. But let me go back to the the games and talk. So yeah, the reason why I'm thinking about switching to Xbox is because of the Game Pass. In Game Pass, the selection of games for me it's much much better than the selection of games in PS Plus. In, yeah, in the Plus subscription. Um, for me, I mean, it's a personal thing, but one of the reasons for that is just that in Game Pass you have day one uh, games. I mean, like, if you think about it, I actually I never buy games on day one for PlayStation because it's very expensive, especially here in Brazil. Like, if you know what I mean, we're talking about uh, uh, reais, it's... 250 to 300 highs um, to buy a game in the release. So I think that in having Game Pass, you have day one uh, games like we, uh, we already had uh, a Blake Tale Requiem that I already played I, here in my computer. It's an amazing game, I really recommend it. It's story driven, it's not very, doesn't have too much action, the action is not really that good, but it's such a beautiful game and such an amazing story. And you had 
what's the name of the other one? That's a survival horror with a biomechanical things. Scorn. Yeah, Scorn also came day one. This was just at the end of the last year. But you have constantly day one games like we have next month an Atomic Heart. And I was waiting for Atomic Heart for a long time. I, I didn't know when it was going to come out and I, I had no clue when it was going to come out and then I saw that it's going to come out in Game Pass Day 1, so it's an amazing thing. And we will have uh, Starfield by Bethesda. Oh, I think all the games by Bethesda because Microsoft bought Bethesda. So yeah, Starfield's like Skyrim in the space. It's coming day one to Game Pass, so that's a big decision that's driving me to buying an Xbox. And also because if I, I already have this in my computer, it would be easier to, to to be switching from my computer to a living room um, set setting uh, using the console. So yeah, let me let, let me know what you think about it. What what would you buy? And don't come saying buy the two of them because I will not buy the two of them. Um, especially living in Brazil, I mean things here are much expensive, much more. It's not only about uh, uh, just uh, switching from dollars to highs because we have the I think one of the highest highest uh, taxes here so for example if a game let's say uh, so it's 500 in US 500 dollars in the US say PS5 for example here it should it should be uh, 2500 yeah you should just mu multiply for around 5 it, I mean, right now it's around uh, one one dollar. It's around five highs. So in theory, it should be that. So it should be two thousand five hundred. But then, with the tax taxes, you multiply that by two. So if you have a console that should be two thousand five hundred, it would be around five thousand. Kind of that. I mean, it's not that much, but for example, now a. a an Xbox is 4,300 highs. So yeah, just by with the taxes, it almost doubles the price. So yeah, I would just buy one. So let me know which one do you recommend if you guys have. Um, and 2023 really seems a promising year for, for Xbox, for Game Pass. Um, there are plenty of games, there, there is Redfall, um, uh, Starfield and many others that are coming day one. Uh, Atomic Heart, as I said, and there are plenty others. And all, all every month they they put games and already the list of games there I re really really like. It's not only because of the exclusives, but mostly because of this day one. Thing. I, re I really like sub subscriptions and I don't like to keep looking for games or which game to play. I mean, looking around for for promotions and promotions and anyway. anyway for for when the, the the released games are cheaper to buy them. So if I can have them uh, in my subscription, it will be much better, you know. So yeah, just let me know. <laughs> Just a devi deviation here. And so let me come back to here, to the mold. And here is another amazing thing why I love 3D code, really like it. And it's very, very good with the voxels. As you could see, I created this hair and I kind of, kind of drew on, on, on the hair, the, the hair. It's not, it's not like, in other softwares that I have to put a ball and keep stretching it around. You can actually draw the, the hairs, the strand of hairs, as I, as, as I did with the, with the eyebrows, as I did with the eyelashes. 
So that's the benefit of using voxels. Try it for yourself. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, and this is not even the final thing we will have. You can say, come on, it's very rough. But that's the idea. I mean, for, I don't even know if it's, this is going to be her hairstyle, but I think so. Uh, but uh, I pretend to uh, send this model to Blender. At first, I will red apologize here in 3D code. I will texture it here in 3D code. And then I will send to Blender. And there, I will try to create the hair fibers. The hair, how you say, the hair emitters, hair particles. Yeah, I will try to make her hair like realistic hair, you know. Here is another greater example. I'm kind of creating this concept of a clothing of her uh, on the fly with the with the, the voxels still. I'm using the 2D paint as you can see. It's amazing. Then I can just grab around. And probably this will I don't know if this is going to be the la the, the final model because it, it's hollow at the, at the center, but it really helped me a lot. There there was there definitely w w w would be other ways to, to do that, but it's okay. And it's, it's very very good for concepting, as you can see. And this is probably a, a, a topic that we will use. Later on, maybe creating concepts on the fly in 3 code, maybe I'll share these videos here. Here's the pose too, it's also very, very good with the voxels. Because you don't need to kind of re-apologize, you just simply drag it and press enter and boom, you have, you have your mesh, your polygons there, your voxels. So yeah, we'll just um, keep playing around and I'm not looking at reference, I didn't have a concept for this, I'm just creating on the fly, it's probably because it, that's why it, it's it's very rough and very crazy and doesn't make too much sense. But hey, this is the beauty of 3D code, I think, to play around with kind of drawing play, you're drawing space. Actually, a point, point that uh, Jama Drabe already said in another, another video I, I saw of him. He said that um, the guys in 3D Code should really think about using VR um, VR sets to 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 be used with uh, 3D Code, you know, because it makes all the sense. Here, I, 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 we can draw shapes on a 2D. Uh, projection, you know, like you're not you, you're adding these on space, but you have to draw this on the surface. With the VR goggles, you can just put clay wherever you want, <laughs> you know. So be able to use that with 3D code would be very amazing because they already have all the tools here that you need. Of course, it's not that simple. I mean. But the thing to consider, and it was Jama himself who said, and I really agree with him. And we are almost getting to the end of this part, but keep an eye out, I'll be um, adding a part two very soon, I guess. I don't know to which level I'll get, but I definitely already have the, the skin pores, textures on, on the surface. I will red apologize it. Uh, and then paint it and then send to blender. I think I will probably add more details to the clothing But the hair the eyebrows do this will be re remade uh, 
in Blender because I will use, use hair particles. This here was just to for me to have a, an idea of how her, her eyebrows would be and how her hair would be. But and it was good for me to show you guys how you can uh, use uh, the benefit of both worlds of surface sculpting and voxel sculpting, like the 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 head itself is already still already in surface mode but all the other objects are voxels so you can have both of them in the same file it's not a problem here you can see the wireframe as i said before i will just add more resolution as you can see i have the clay brush strength uh, depth strength set to zero but still with the auto subdivide turned on and i just keep the size of the brush the same so i keep the, the, the level of subdivision and I just add, add, add geometry and as I, you can see at the, at the bottom I already have 13 million polygons. So that's it guys, thank you.